Hey, everybody, welcome back to Pod Cakes. This is part two with my good friend, Billy Zuricat. If you haven't seen part one, go back and watch it. Just stop now. Don't continue. Go back and watch part one. You have to watch that one because that is the absolute foundation for what's to come in part two. Part one, we learned about Billy growing up. We learned about his love of sports, working for ESPN, and ultimately starting to have some physical issues that started raising some concerns. Episode ended with him finding out the diagnosis of muscular dystrophy. Now we get into how he started raising awareness in an extremely unique way and how that very unique way turned out to raising a lot of money for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. I am so excited for you to watch the conclusion of this in part two. But before we get there, friends, remember, if you're watching or listening to this on YouTube, go down, like, subscribe, share, and leave us a comment. Even if it's only one word, please leave us a comment. If you're on Spotify right now, please do the same thing. Subscribe to the channel and leave us a comment. Again, only if it's one word. What that does is it helps us raise and grow and put this podcast out to a more larger and diverse crowd who might need to hear stories like this. We have a lot of things planned and a lot of fantastic guests that are about to come on. And I just want their stories to be pushed out to as many people as possible. Without further ado, part two with my friend, Billy Zurichat. Time went on, eventually uh, I started making an impact and they started seeing how hard I would work and how like I was, at a young age I was being very professional about the whole thing. And uh, yeah, an opening came available um, six months into my internship and they said, hey, we would love to hire you. Um, we have this position open as a part-time producer. You would be um, you know, running, being a board operator for White Sox baseball. And so alarming things were starting to happen or like eye raising things were starting to happen. It, it still wasn't even alarming yet for me. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I'm just, just rushing. And then, yeah, then I noticed like my running would even start to get a little choppy. We got your, we got your results and uh, we have a diagnosis. But I get a call from a 312 number, Chicago area. And then I'm like, oh, I think it's the hospital. I get a call and I pull over. Um, and uh, it's Dr. Jacobson from the medical center. He's like, hey, are you, do you have a moment to talk? I said, sure. He's like, all right, um, we, got your, we got your results. And uh, we have a diagnosis. I said, sure. Oh, well, well, you know, I was like, well, what's, moment. what's going on? And he goes, all right, uh, you have what's called limb girdle muscular dystrophy 2L. And it's also known as LGMD2L. It's a very rare form of muscular dystrophy um, that you were born with. Uh, and it was a genetic disease uh, that you're inherited. Um, but you're born with it, but it didn't take shape until it can take shape at any point in your life. Yours didn't affect you till you're, you know, you said you're starting to get symptoms when you're around 30. Um, but you you have this disease and I said, Oh my God, you know, it's weird. It's like a relief that I, I, I have an answer now, but then I start asking questions. Uh, are there any treatments? Are there any cures? He's like, no, there's no treatments. Um, and there's no cures. I said, okay. Uh, and I was like, what's like, what's the timetable? Do this is like progressive. He's like, it is progressive. Um, it will slowly uh, worsen as time goes on. I think that, you know, we'll talk more in person when we set up your appointment, but I think it's something you should be able to walk your entire life. Um, but, you know, it's so rare that we don't really know. Um, let's set up some appointments and uh, we'll talk to you in a, a couple of days. It's okay. I hang up the phone with him and I cry. I'm alone by myself. I, lo I lose it. I lose it yeah. because I have... I have an answer finally, not the answer I wanted to hear because for years I had this pipe dream that I was going to wake up one day and I'm going to be okay. It's all going to go away. That's how I thought. And so now all of a sudden I'm 38 and I have 
a diagnosis of a very rare disease. I have a disability and I have to learn how to relive my life. And it was, excuse my language, it was fucked up. I was, I was miserable. Like I just lost it. And then I, you know, I remember, you know, calling Rachel and telling her and it was a lot. Uh, so after eight long years of trying to figure out why I was falling and, you know, what these issues were, I have a reason. I have a rare disease and yeah. a rare neuromuscular disease. And uh, it sucked. It was, the be, the beginning was very difficult. Um, you know, I went I to the doctor. Only I went, imagine. Yeah, it was hard, man. I don't like, it's crazy. You know, I don't know what, about. what, I don't know what part of the timeline uh, this was, but it, it was somewhere right in here because you were like, I driving down the road, probably booked the load with you. Mm-hmm. Maybe, March, but I, of, uh, yeah. March 13th. I'll remember that day. March 13th of, um, of, uh, 2021. So I, I remember sitting at a, a truck stop in the back of the, uh, a snow white, my old truck. Yeah. And, um, I just can't remember if you called me or if I called you, but, um, I remember we had a conversation and you were telling me about, Hey, this is what, cause you already told me before kind of what was going on, I believe. Mm-hmm. And then you were telling me, okay, this is what I just found out. And I think you and I talked for at least an hour. Yeah. Right about an hour. And I just remember sitting there and you telling me just all of this and just sitting in the sleeper, just going, Whoa, man, this is, uh, I'm you want to say Definitely some crazy some pretty off. deep stuff. I literally put them, yeah. I'm looking at my phone. I just searched your, your email. I'm going to tell you, we, I booked the load. We, you had a load you were doing for me, um, like four days prior on the eighth, yeah. on the eighth. Yeah. I just, I just, just kind of peeped that really quickly and like see what, where it was, but yeah, we were, we were obviously, we got to know each other right around that time. Um, yeah. And it was, uh, it sucked. Uh, the first, the hardest thing for me was I became fixated with loss. Um, as you know, we've just been talking for an hour and a half. You can tell, you know, I'm a confident person. I've had my wins, whether it was, yeah. you know, winning and, and getting my uh, job at ESPN and being the youngest person they hired. Even going back to something I didn't mention, I was always like the, the top salesperson at Finish Line and Champs when I worked at those stores. Like, I always hustled, like I had victories, you know, got a beautiful fiance and I have a lot of things, a great dog, great family. I have great friends in my life, a lot to be happy about and a lot of personal victories, but I was fixated on loss. Um, I was obsessed with loss. I can't do this anymore. I can't run or jump. I can't play basketball. Uh, I have, I have to think about things differently. When I go places now, it's not like I can go to a Bulls game, something I've done hundreds of times over the years. And I can't just go to the United Center now without like looking at a seating chart to figure out where the railings are and are there stairs and is there a handicap accessible seating and access. And I'm just, I'm just beating myself up and I'm a shell of my happy self. Um, I obviously have Rachel and Einstein and I'm not like, not every moment is miserable, but like for the most, on the surface, I'd have my days that I was, you know, I appeared happy, but I was, I'm fighting so much. And we talk about mental health. Uh, we've mentioned it before here. You know, I had that tough stretch in 2016, but like, this is the hardest news I've ever had to face in my life. And going oh, yeah. to, going to Rush Medical Center, um, they held what they called MDA clinics. The Muscular Dystrophy Association would coordinate clinics at different care centers throughout the country where they set up an appointment with basically all your appointments are, are streamlined into one visit. So you'll meet your neurologist, physical therapist, occupational therapist, um, social worker, dietitian, all these different doctors do all your tests. You just basically do one visit and they coordinate and they do all that stuff. So I go to this, this is my initial doctor visit. So I meet with like this team of doctors. We go over everything from breathing and checking other vitals and stuff to 
we looked at my family history and we came up with the belief that even though this is a genetic disease, I am not, no one in my family has it. They're just, they're, my parents were, I guess, carriers of this gene uh, that causes this issue, but no one in my family has it. It's just kind of a freak thing that happened to me, which is even crazier. But um, during this visit, the social worker was talking to me. She's like, hey, have you, have you been to therapy at all? And I said, no, I've never done therapy in my life. She's like, I'm like mental therapy, not physical therapy or occupational therapy. Like, have you right. seen a therapist? Right. You seem like you're unpacking like a lot of stuff right now. And I don't think you're giving yourself like any type of relief. You're just trying to grind through it and you're taking out a lot of changes. And I said, okay, no, I, I haven't. So we, um, she set me up the list of different therapists. I did my research and I ended up starting to see a therapist in May of 2021, you know, a month and a half or so after my diagnosis. And that was uh, one of the first steps for me of uh, starting to understand things a little bit better um, about myself, about my condition, about what was going on and kind of like talking through it. And I didn't realize how much I was unpacking. I had a life-changing diagnosis, you know, just had my life changing with, you know, having a, a partner live with me now and all, there's so much going on. And career was kind of like in flux with work there's a lot of stuff going on with the pandemic and and work was kind of like really at that point it was pretty slow and then it started it started the change but like at that point it was a really like there's a lot going on um you know and uh you know that started to give me some clarity and and having somebody you can just talk to i always have friends i can talk to but like having someone who's not doesn't have any skin in the game is, is like a game changer for me that I can just kind of like openly speak about what, what was going on and talk through it. And I remember telling her, and even I told Rachel the same thing. When I got diagnosed, um, you know, I, w I shared it. She pushed me to share it on my Instagram. And I didn't have any follow. I had like 80 followers. It was just like friends. I never did anything, yeah. used social media for that. Like, I didn't do it for likes or I didn't care about any of that. That was never part of my life. I would... I would share things on there, but not, um, you know, nothing that was serious or personal. But she says, you know, you, one thing I know about you, Billy, you know, a lot of people, like you have a lot of friends, a lot of people care about you. You should say what's going on because you never know who you can reach. So I remember like posting about it after I got diagnosed and I wrote this, like kind of spilled my heart out and talked about what's going on. I said, this is what I have. And a lot of you probably didn't know. And I was shocked, shocked to find out how many people had no clue so like i had no idea you had anything wrong with you and so but that was all i did i, I did that at the beginning like in march and i never really um i never really talked about it from at that point on i just kind of went business as usual you know um would do my uh do my therapy once a week or whatever it was and and just kind of like try to grind through it um but I wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't really, I was still kind of like in the weird denial about it, you know, if that makes sense. I'm still kind of like living that lie I talked about before, you know, I felt, for years I felt like I was kind of living a lie. Um, and so, yeah, it was, a, it was kind of a weird transition. So, you know that I got diagnosed, um, you know, with muscular dystrophy now, but this is where I got to kind of take you back. So I talked yeah. about all of the loss and a lot of the changes that I had to go in my life physically, mentally, and everything. Um, Creativity-wise, though, I needed something. I didn't have sports anymore. I couldn't run or jump. Didn't have you know, my, my basketball during the week. I did not work in sports media anymore, so I had no creative outlet there. Um, I had an Instagram page for Einstein. That was like where I got my creative kicks, but otherwise I had nothing. And so... I need I need to scratch that that itch and so I always like cooking like I watched a lot of like Food Network I was kind of like I love cooking shows and I always watched cooking and I got and I like to cook but I was never like great at it you know and then I decided to like make cooking my like my new sports I I joked that I, I traded in like my jersey for an apron and 
I started like really focusing on being a better cook and eventually a better, uh, eventually a baker. I never baked before. So like I wanted to get into bread making and such. So I like, I deep dove. Oh, yeah. I started watching, you've said this earlier, YouTube's a great resource. I started watching YouTube videos, Food Network, uh, reading cookbooks and getting comfortable with like techniques I didn't know, using recipes, making, you know, cooking things with recipes and baking with recipes. And eventually I didn't need those recipes anymore. I felt comfortable. It was just like, it was like going to a gym and shooting a uh, hundred free three pointers. Like I used to do a hundred free throws. I would make like 10 loaves of bread for friends and just give it away. Um, and like, you know, do all sorts of stuff like that. And cooking became my passion. Like I was, you know, instead of, uh, in, you know, like in, I made the reference about the Jersey, uh, you know, the Jersey turning into an apron. It was like sneakers were becoming knives and like kitchen equipment. Like I was just getting into that stuff, all like really immersing myself into it. And I got, you know, comfortable and confident. Like I used to be on the basketball court. I was getting like that in the kitchen and pizza making especially became one of my bigger passions. I started teaching myself how to make pizza, um, all sorts of styles, whether it was like a Detroit, uh, Detroit saw pizza, pan pizzas to all sorts of Chicago, whether it's deep dish, you know, cracker thin tavern style, which is a thing here, stuffed pizza, New York style, you name it. I was trying to get good at everything and become well-rounded. And um, that helped me, cooking and baking helped me find like calm during a time of turbulence when there was a lot of things uh, around me changing and a lot of things that were, um, you know, up in the air and I didn't really know. I just would just go to the kitchen and forget it all because I didn't need to be running around. I'd just be in one spot and just focus, focusing on seeing through. We talked about making a production and why I liked to do audio production because I can take one idea and build it into something. Well, I get to take some flour, some yeast, a little water, maybe some salt, sugar, and olive oil, and I can turn that into a dough, you know, and that dough turns into a pizza. I, I see these things through. During the pandemic, when everything was closed, all I would do is take on these very long, ambitious cooking projects whether it was like smoking a brisket to sour, obviously sour, everybody was making sourdough, it felt like, but I was one of those people. I made uh, I made my own bagels for a while. I joked about doing a bagel pop-up called Einstein's Dad's Bagels, and I ripped off the Einstein's Brothers Bagels logo, and I put like me and Einstein right. thing. Um, but yeah, I was passionate, and I was having fun cooking. It, it gave me joy. And during the pandemic, one of my favorite things to do was go to the farmer's market because there was nothing else to do. I can go outside and go to the farmer's market and I can see all of these like crazy ingredients that I can't find at the grocery store. And so I go to the farmer's market and I joke when I go to these I, that I black out and I just like come back with a bunch of random stuff. And so I came back with like five, five yeah. pounds of uh, shishito peppers, which is very funny. I'm like, the hell am I going to do with all these peppers? Like I just have all these shishito peppers and I've only made roasted shishitos. I've never done anything with that before. But at this point of my like cooking journey or whatever you want to call it, um, I didn't need a recipe anymore. I understood concepts. I understood flavors and I trusted myself to like make things. So I made this like cream sauce out of these peppers. I just cooked some peppers and some garlic and some shallots and Add a heavy cream and reduce it to get this like thick sauce with some um with some parmesan and i'm like okay the hell do i do with the sauce now i just made the sauce it's good but i don't know what to do with it i was making a lot of pizzas at the time so i decided to make a pizza with it so it was some just like basic like sheet pan grandma style whatever you want to call it pizza with that sauce sure. some, mozzarella, some mozzarella cheese and then it was like end of summer it was like september so like Corn is in season. So I'm like, oh, corn and peppers go well together. So it'll be a shishito pepper, corn, and cheese pizza. So I made this pizza and it's like a weird combination, but like weird colors for pizza. It's like green and green and yellow. And but it was really good and it was like unique and it had a really cool flavor to it. And there is this um, the owner of Polly G's Pizzeria here in Chicago. Um, his name is Derek Tung. Um, Polly G's is a great pizzeria here in the city. They do Detroit style, and like um, Neapolitan style, but they're one of the better known places. We kind of became friends, acquaintances, whatever you want to call it over the years, because I was just a customer there. And I reached out to him for some advice because I told him I want to start making pizza. 
and he gave me some like tips and he kind of became like my pizza mentor and like pizza muse uh over the years i would like have him try my stuff so i made him i made him i brought him over that slice of that pizza that i made and he goes this is like really good stuff billy it's like unique really unique flavors it looks all you know it's good so flash forward now um you know we're we're back to let's say june of 2021 i told you i was going to therapy still kind of yeah. navigating this new diagnosis you know now that cooking is a huge part of my life that's like all i would do over the years is just when i talk on my instagram was just sharing my my food creations people know me as like now billy the baker and that was just like amongst my friends and stuff like there would be friends givings and i would i would host it i was doing all the big cooking projects and such and so not to interrupt you real quick yeah. but we we just kind of brushed over because a little while ago, you just said, you know, your your Instagram was at like eighty followers or whatever, and you yeah. posted your deal about your yeah. about about being diagnosed, and now you're like, yeah. oh yeah, I just put this on Instagram. So what what point were you starting to cook? Like, you know what? I want to start sharing this because I remember just watching, and all of a sudden it was like rad food stuff was just popping up. I, you know, just... I probably started. <clears throat> I started posting stuff. And like, I'd say like 2016, honestly, because that's when I was really getting the baking. I started posting stuff. Like I wouldn't get if it was still like still amateurish. It wasn't like, you know, I was right. still early, early on. Not until like 2019 was I really starting to get like sharing stuff more about that. But again, it wasn't like every week. It was or it wasn't like every day or anything. It was just post it, get, get my 10 likes and move on. You know what I mean? It wasn't like. I didn't expect anything from it. It was just like an, it was like, like a journal for me, I guess. And, 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 and then, but as like the pandemic happened, I started doing, you know, posting more and more on there um, and, and showcasing what I was doing and people were seeing it. We were like, Oh, that looks good. I want to try that. You know, I would, a lot of times I would make things and post it on my Instagram stories and say, who wants a slice or who wants some of this? I would just make it and just give it away. Um, and, so I started kind of getting a reputation for making pizzas and such um, on my Instagram. Even though I didn't have I didn't have a following at all, but like friends and such were like, "Yeah, okay, he's you know his pizza is really good. He's, they've tried the pizza and stuff, or they've seen my food. They know how much I'm into it, you know." And so um, everything kind of like uh, I'm getting more confident in the kitchen and stuff. But this is a you know, I'm still kind of navigating this new disease and, and this things, but I'm, I'm getting more, I'm getting a little more comfortable, like baby steps, getting more comfortable with myself, like knowing that I have this disease, but I'm still, you know, I'm still, still kind of fighting through it. But I remember having a conversation with Rachel um, early on when I got diagnosed, I said, you know, I would love to, I'd love to advocate and speak out about this, but like, I wasn't ready. Like when I'm ready, I mean, I'd like to do this, but I don't want to be this like fake advocate and talking about like, oh, it's rainbows and sunshine. Let's just do this and this and this. But when it when it's really not, and I'm also not comfortable right. even talking about it. Um, so I get a call. Rachel's family is initially from Greenville, North Carolina. Um, so she moved to Chicago. I think she's been in Chicago for a decade now, and. Um, at the time, she uh, we would go visit like go visit her family down down in Greenville. Um, actually, technically, it was actually gonna be the first time I was gonna visit her family because it was um, we at this point we've been dating a year now, and so we're gonna go down to Greenville. Actually, technically, Emerald Isle, North Carolina, to visit like her family gets to, like a they rent like a beach house in the summer. It's her annual trip out there, so we go to the beach and we're down there. Um, we ended up going down there, and we're having a good time. Um, and all of a sudden, I get a call, though. I get a phone call from Derek uh, from Polly G's, who never calls me. We'd only text. We're not, like, that close where we'd have to ever call each other. So he calls me. I pick up. I'm like, hey, what's going on? He's like, hey, um, we're doing an event at the pizzeria here um, where we're going to celebrate the best home pizza makers in Chicago. Um, we're going to raise some money for No Kid Hungry to help uh, childhood food insecurity throughout the country. And we're I'm handpicking seven of what I deem the best home pizza makers in the city to make a pizza of their choice. And it's going to be a ticketed event. 
where we'll have the seven people making pizzas. Well, you guys all make your own pizzas for this crowd. And 100% of the proceeds of all the ticket sales will go to the charity. I would love for you to make your make a pizza in this. And I want you to make that pepper and corn pizza you had me try. I said, oh, my God. Like, I said, yeah, right away. It was very funny. He goes, I didn't think he had, I let him finish the sentence. I'm like, yeah, I'm in. He's like, do you want to hear the rest of it? I'm like, no, I don't care. I needed some. I was just excited. I needed something to get really pumped about. So I made that pizza, as I mentioned before, in 2020. I revisited it, the, that same pizza in June of 2021 now at home. And I wanted to make it better because I've gotten like from 2020 to 2021, I was a, I was a better cook and better baker. I, I spent so much time at home during the pandemic doing this that I got better. And so I'm like, you know, I can make this pizza way better. So I changed it up into make it, I, instead of like the sheet pan pizza, I made it a Detroit style pizza, which is known for kind of like fluffy, airy crust, but has like caramelized cheese on the edges. It's baked in a, a, a Detroit steel pan. Um, so I changed the style of pizza to make it like a smaller Detroit style pizza. I added some um, yellow cheddar to give it a little like more color and then have that really crispy cheese edge that you get with an iconic Detroit pizza. I still had that same chichito cream sauce, corn. I added pickle jalapenos to like give it a little acid to cut all the riches from the cheese and the, and the, and the heavy cream and everything like that. And then after it was baked, I topped each individual slice. It's like six slices, pretty much square slices. Each slice got a roasted shishito pepper that I would put as a garnish. And all of a sudden I have this like now refined version of this idea that I had. And it's like this show-stopping, very unique looking pizza. Whether it's the colors to the textures and obviously the flavor, it's different. And he goes, I want you to make that version of that pizza at this event. I go, sure. So I am so pumped now. I go and tell Rachel what this is going to do. I'm like, I know, I'm hungry too. I got <laughs> I've been, been 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 sipping on this beer the entire time, but now I need to get some dinner. Oh, fantastic. Um, yeah. Oh, Hold on, actually. I have a guest for you. Oh, we got Einstein. He just happened hey, to walk. Hey, buddy. Up. There um, he is. He says hello. So, yeah, this is, hello, this is Einstein. Einstein. Yeah, he's a he's Yeah. Gonna go he's down. awesome. Okay, he's just walking around. So, um, he, you know, I'm so pumped to tell Rachel what I'm going to do, and I'm like, I'm so excited. I've never worked in a professional kitchen before. Um, I'm so pumped for this. Uh, and I even re I named the pizza. I gave it a name. I love giving things pun names and silly names. And I called the pizza, um, the sheesh that's corny. That was my name for my shishito pepper and corn pizza. And so I'm, you know, going to this event now. I have to make 14 of this pizza. Again, I've never been in a professional kitchen, but I know how professional kitchens work because I've watched so many damn food shows over the years. That like right. I kind of knew how to like. Remember, I told you earlier that I went to the uh, the Bears games and I would sit in the press box and I learned how to be a professional because I just watched these people. Well, mm -hmm. I watched enough cooking mm -hmm. shows. I, I kind of like, kind of knew how to set up a prep station and be organized and get on all your ingredients. It's called mise en place, or like get everything in place. And I had everything organized. And like even when I was there at this event, like getting ready. He's like, you're good to go, right? And it's like, you need to do testers or anything? I'm like, no, I've made this pizza like at home all the time. I know what I'm doing. And he saw my station was all organized. And he's like, you're all ready. I'm like, yeah, I've been, I've been kind of like just like waiting on this moment. Um, and so I made, uh, I made 14 of that pizza. And all of a sudden I come out. We have to like walk out to, intro, to introduce ourselves to the crowd and say, hey, this is my pizza. What's on it? Enjoy. So I go out there, you know, hey, guys, I'm. I'm Billy. Uh, this is the She Shets Corny. Tell them what's on it. Hope you like it. That's it. Ten seconds. I'm off. I walk back out now after I take my apron off. I come back out, see how people liked it. And people are like, holy shit, dude, that pizza's awesome. Like, that's incredible. I've never had a pizza like this. Like, do you have a, do you work in a pizzeria? I'm like, no, no, not at all. And I'm like, I'm just a home, home cook, home baker. They're like, no, this is, this is some special stuff. And you know, people are coming up to me like, this is incredible. Loving it. Every slice was accounted for. It was, I mean, it was awesome. It was out of all the pizzas that were at that event. Like mine was, you know, clearly the favorite. And I was so happy. 
And Derek was so happy and Rachel was so proud of me. Everybody's so proud and happy because I was just needed that. And Derek comes up to me at the end of the event. He's like, puts his arm around me. He's like, man, you killed it, man. He's like, people loved it. He's like, what are your thoughts on putting this on special? If we do a special pizza every month, we have a spot open in November. You want to put it on special? I'm like, do I? That'd be incredible. Like having my pizza at a pizzeria. I'm like, hell yeah, let's do it. So we were going to put the She Shats Corny on the menu in November and just make it a special. And that was it. Just going to be pizza on the menu, nothing more, nothing less. And this is where uh, this is where my Spider-Man origin story uh, comes into, into play here. This is where a new mantra, a new nickname, a new everything was born for me. And this is where everything changes. Um, so two weeks before... Um, so this is October of, uh, of 2021 pizza set to start on, uh, November 3rd. I think whatever the two, whatever the Monday was start the, uh, the week of November I'm walking Einstein in my neighborhood. Um, just walking around and, and you know, I told you before I fall part of my life to trip and lose my balance. It's just fortunately something that happens. And I just kind of hope that I'm not, I'm not, I don't hurt myself when it does, you know, and I fell walking him and I'm on the ground and I can't just like when I'm on the ground, I can't just stand up. I have to push up with my upper body and like kind of like pull on something, usually get myself balanced to get me, get me back to my feet. Well, I fall and a you know young woman is walking behind me in the neighborhood, probably in her twenties, maybe, maybe early thirties. Who knows? She literally looks at me on the ground. Einstein's on the floor next to me. It's like on his leash on the side. Looks at me and just keeps walking as I'm trying to struggle to get up. And doesn't acknowledge me, doesn't offer help. Just kind of looks down at me like a peasant. And I'm, I got triggered. Like I was, I was furious. I don't want to drop F bonds. I was furious. And I, like every emotion went over me. I was mad at her. And I pull myself back up and I was okay. I didn't hurt myself or anything, but I was just like shaking. I was so, I was so mad and I was so mad at her. I was mad at myself actually, which more than anything, because I got sick of it. Something flashed and I got sick of hiding, sick of acting like nothing's wrong. And I called Derek, like literally in that moment, I called him. Well, actually, it was, I don't, I'll be in a completely truthful. The first call I had to make was my, to my barber because I had to tell her that I can't come to the appointment because I just fell. I, I just, you know, I was in, I was in the right mind state. I'm like, hey, I just fell. Can you, you know, tell Jamie I had a, a you know, issue. I can't make it in. Second call was calling Derek and I said, hey, Derek, you know, I gotta be, I gotta be truthful. I gotta make sure you got the, the timeline right. You know, yeah, yeah. The barber calls very important call. Um, Absolutely, so, mine's on Friday. Yeah, hell yeah. There you go. Um, I got mine last week. Uh, So the big thing was I called Derek and I said, hey, I need to rename the pizza. And he's like, sure, what do you want to call it? I said, I want to rename it. I want to call it the Tripping Billy. And he starts laughing. He goes, that's a great name. He's like, why? I'm like, well, or he said, are you a Dave Matthews Band fan? And I'm like, no, not at all don't like Dave Matthews at all. Dave Matthews band has a song called tripping billies, I guess. Uh, I didn't know this at the time. Um, yeah, but I didn't know that. yeah, so there's a, there's even like a cover band, I think called the tripping billies, but I told him the reason was I have muscular dystrophy and because of muscular dystrophy, it causes me to have issues with balance causes me to, you know, issues. I can fall. My legs can give out. I have weakness. And, um, I want to call the pizza, the tripping billy. I'd love if you can donate a dollar to to the Muscular Dystrophy Association, which is the largest non-voluntary organization, non-for-profit that is going to try to find a cure for muscular dystrophy, for ALS, and all these different neuromuscular diseases. They're the same organization that I told you that sets up that those those care clinics that I went to. So I, I figured, you know, if there's ever going to be a cure one day, it's going to be connected to this organization. Why don't we raise some money? Why don't I? share my story of reinvention through cooking and through baking and maybe turn a really tough time into a positive and showcase that like 
yeah, things can change, but like you can you can reinvent yourself and still do positive things. And he was blown away by that. And he's like, if you're okay with making fun of yourself with that name, I'm I'm fine with it. And I said, no. I mean, no one's gonna get offended besides me. I'm I'm making fun of myself. So literally, no one in your staff. And I'm sorry. LGMD is a, a very rare disease, so I'm sure there's not like a ton of people with that disease walking into your door that are going to be offended by this. So let's do this, and I'd like to do it. And he was blown away, and he said, yeah, let's let's do it. So all of a sudden now, this pizza that's going on the menu is now something more. And right. um, yeah, it was, it was crazy. So yeah, as you know... Well, you- I think if, if, if I can jump in right there... Yeah, please. I think uh, that that is probably one of the the best things of your story. I think that could have happened. I mean, it seems like a lot through this conversation. You've had a couple of those hmm, moments where you kind of yeah. progress into something, and you know that young lady walking by you and and giving you that edge to. I can't speak for everybody by any means, yeah. but I I. I think sometimes when people get a life changing diagnosis, you only have two paths to go. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think one path is just woe is me, really into depression, you know, probably some really bad thoughts, you know, and just choose to be kind of that downward, downward spiral, if you will. Mm-hmm. Or you can do something like what you're doing and that what you're doing, like you were saying, you know, turning a, a negative into a positive and, and showing your story through cooking and bringing awareness to it. You know, once I started noticing really what you were doing, that that is a, a moment for me observing you of like, wow, this is actually really inspiring for for other people to hear how y- you're just you're just, you're just doing that, you know, you're moving on and we'll get there, yeah. but on your Instagram, you can go watch yourself shoot baskets right now, you know, yeah. Yeah. you're we'll, still out there shooting the ball around. We'll talk about all that. I mean, like that was, so now the pizza is going to be on the menu, but as you know, I don't half-ass anything I do. Uh, I decide that I'm going to make this bigger and I, I've always been a dreamer and I always think big things i don't like to think at this level i think up there i always have the mantra like to the moon with everything um you know rachel even we've talked about this before it's sometimes like i always i'm always trying to think ahead sometimes i can't just be complacent with like the basic i always got to do more and i said okay i have this opportunity now i need to i need to make the most of this and so i take social media for the first first thing Okay, let me use social media as a tool. Uh, how can I get more eyes and ears on what I'm doing? Let me start, you know, I know pizza is going to go out on this menu, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create the post, promote it, talk about my cause, talk about my story. I'll share it. I had friends share it. I had friends of friends share it. I had started reaching out to local newspapers and, and, and our, you know, um, local, local media and even reaching out to chefs that I don't know, bigger chefs in the city. He said, hey, this is who I am. This is what I'm doing. This is my story. Can you just share this post? I'm just trying to get as many eyes ears as I can on it. And they started like start doing that. I started gaining like a little bit of traction. Started getting some followers from it. Um, I have a degree in journalism. I used to produce a radio show. I know how to get a story. I know how to get people. I used to book guests for my show. So like I know how to receive a story pitch. Guess what? I know how to make a story pitch. So I started pitching my story out to people and. You know, Block Club Chicago wrote an article about me. I went on my old radio show, our old radio station. Old old guy, old producers of mine, we were all the same age. We all came in together. Well, they're still at the radio station now, but they're not producers anymore. They actually host the night show. And we all work together, and I, we're still pretty close. And I said, guys, can I come on and promote my pizza and share my story? And they're like, gladly. And so I did like an eight-and-a-half-minute interview, and I was like kind of nervous about it, but I – I did great. And they, my friend Adam, who hosts the show, was like, as soon as we hung up, he texted me. He's like, that was one of the best interviews we've ever had, like ever. So started gaining some attention, garnered a little buzz online, started getting some media. And all of a sudden now people are going to try the pizza and they're loving it. 
and sharing photos of the pizza. And like the, the Tripping Billy is awesome. This pizza is great. It's a great story, great cause, but the pizza itself is really good. And all of a sudden, I'm starting to get now, I'm starting to get confidence. Um, starting to realize that like maybe food is my voice. But then as time goes on, I go on like WGN TV here and, and TV in here in Chicago and I'm doing like media and doing interviews. And I'm like speaking like confidently for the first time about this because I realize it's not just I'm not doing this just for me. And so like I realize that my voice then has power and I start to find my voice and I find starting to find meaning that maybe food is a way to get this story out there. And bring attention to it and hopefully inspire people that through, you know, change. It doesn't have to be health. This is not like a health thing. If you lost your job, went through a relationship that ended, whatever. If you have change in your life, I try to show you that like you can still do positive things through readjusting and, and you know, kind of like having the mantra that like just tweak some things, man. Do something different. Find joy and then, you know, go from there. And I realized that like I can do this through food and through food partnerships i had the idea of now collaborating with restaurants with different food items not just the pizza but like pizza and i make a lot of sandwiches doing things that i'm good at let me create because i love creating in the kitchen let me use my creative skills and culinary skills that i've kind of taught myself and use this as a as a way to do it but also take the big audiences that these large restaurants and known places that are in the city let me use their massive followings on social media and parlay that into uh, an audience for myself. Um, and I started uh, started with the Tripping Billy Pizza. I made a breakfast sandwich with a place called Spinning J. Um, I did another a play, a sandwich with a place called J.P. Graziano, which I'm wearing their sweatshirt right now. It's one of the largest uh, well-known Italian sandwich shops in the city. Iconic place. Been open 100 years. I did a sandwich with them and all of a sudden now uh, like I went from never showing my face on social media and never talking, never doing videos to now I'm speaking out and people are now actually getting like a glimpse of who I am. I'm sharing my story, but I'm also doing it my own way. Like I'm, I told you earlier about how you create, uh, I create things for myself and I don't do it to pander. I'm making my own path by doing it, by creating my own things. I used to make hype videos when I worked for ESPN about the Cubs or a hype audio, whatever you want to call it for the Bulls, Cubs, Sox, Bears, White Sox, Blackhawks, all that. Guess what? I get to make hype videos now, literally hype videos of my own life. And that's the coolest right. thing in the world because now I get to use those skills that I had in media and in radio. And I do that every day, making food videos and whatever and hype videos and things. And it started getting momentum. And the MDA reached out to me who didn't even know who I was. And was like, hey, we've gotten $3,000 from like a fundraiser from you? Who? What's going on? And I told them my story and what I'm doing and like my beliefs and my background. And they were like, this is incredible. Like, you've done this just all on your own. And I'm like, yeah, this is, I just wanted to do this. This is what I, I felt this is the best way to do it. And I found kind of my way to do it. And they're like, well, you're kind of like a heaven set for us because. Um, typically people that have rare diseases, maybe don't feel comfortable speaking about it or don't have a platform and you're building a platform and you're clearly comfortable speaking about it. Do you, would you be interested in becoming the ambassador for Illinois for the MDA? And I said, gladly. So I kind of just took that wow. role and now did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm the Illinois ambassador for the MDA. And so it's right yeah it's crazy and then now these food collaborations are you know are, are happening a lot now i'm doing a lot this is now we're in 2022 and people know who the tripping who tripping billy is which is my new nickname essentially and they know like my cause and they're seeing the yeah. things i'm creating um and i i decided at that point though like i would have never i, I did the, the tripping billy once at Polly g's and then i i'm bringing it back at a different place a couple months later and i said you know what i'm gonna call i'm gonna create something i call the tripping billy tour because if i didn't make this pizza there would be none of this it wouldn't have started unless i i, unless I made this pizza and i took this chance so i call i created what i call the tripping billy tour where i 
take my pizza and I go to different pizzerias around the city and I recreate my pizza with their style of pizza. So like same toppings, but you might get a Detroit style version. You might get a New York style pizza, a Neapolitan. It's all shaped differently, sliced differently, but at the end of the day, it's my pizza. And it's, it's a weird way, a fun way, I thought, because my story is one of reinvention, to yeah. reinvent my pizza in all these different ways. And so, so your, your pizza in all these different places, I mm -hmm. mean, obviously you're not there making it, right? So no. you have to give them the recipe. Yeah. You know, so you have all that and you're like. Yeah, I go in. The gold what I'll do, what I'll do is I'll go into the place. I'll make them the original. I always make them make my version with my cross. You try this. I tell them my story. They get the inspiration behind it. And then I show, okay, this is how we can do yours. And we do a tester, see how we want it to look. And I, I give them the sauce recipe, which is like the, um, you know, the main, the main aspect of it. And then they take it, recreate it. They sell it. I promote it. Uh, you know, I become the face for it, talk about it. They donate a, you know, a portion of the proceeds and obviously take care of the staff with the rest. I don't, the money is one thing. I don't really necessarily even care. Like money is great to, um, to use almost like as a stat, I guess. But to me, it's more of the eye ears. I want I'm more of that reach because like, Hopefully the money turns into something one day, but like, there's no guarantees. I just really want to maybe impact people that are going through it or whatever, just like inspire people through the, through the time. So, uh, I think you're really, four, I think you're really four, doing four, that too. Yeah. I, I mean, I think you're really doing, doing the help because as your platform is growing and as you're getting on different people's social medias and people are, are just finding out about you and your story, I mean, you don't know the silent people that are just following you that are just like, oh, this is what I need. And I'm sure that you're probably getting the DMs and stuff yeah. every once in a while. And I just like, them, hey, man, this is great. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, got them a that lot. That stuff right there. Money is great. And, and money is going to a good cause and going to the good purpose. But it's those individuals where you're inside, where you're helping those people, man. That's really... That's spectacular and fantastic all at the same time. Fantacular, Thank you. Thank you. I guess. Thank you. Well, I mean, the craziest part is uh, when I, I I never really understood the reach of social media or didn't I didn't I didn't know how it right. was that following. No, I, I've I've gotten a lot of messages over the past uh, you know a couple of years now um, from people that have muscular dystrophy, whether it's children or adult, you know, children, adults or parents of children that said, "Hey, thank you for doing this." I've I've speaking, uh, I've speaking, I've speaking, I've spoken at a, a bunch of different events. I've led, um, it's called the muscle walk. I've done, I've emceed it two, two years in a row here in Chicago. Um, it is a, uh, it's one, it's basically like a walkathon essentially is one of the largest fundraising events of the year. I speak out at that. Um, and I've had, you know, parents come up to me and say like, you're a great inspiration for these, you're a great role model for these children. And, and you're just, you know, great ambassador for adults and anybody going through it because you just you handle yourself in in such a in such a good way and a positive way but you're also real like i i this is not i share when the bad things happen it's not all good i i told you a story about um falling and my you know dislocated joint which kind of sent me into this whole idea of going back to the hospital is because of that that injury that dislocation has happened to me three times since then. Oh, the same thing. I fall, and it, because I've done it once, I'm prone to it happening. So, right, it's crazy, actually. True story. February thirteenth, twenty twenty one, is the first time it happened. One year later, in a day, February fourteenth, I was about to take Rachel out to th uh, also Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day uh, dinner I had planned. I walked outside, took one step, or you know, I was trying to cross a crosswalk. Leg gave out. I fell. I was in the middle of the street this time. Popped out, middle of the road. I can't do anything. Thankfully, neighbors saw me, came running out, helped me pick me up out of the street. Awful. Uh, three months after that, after I recovered, again, it happened again. And it kept happening. And it happened actually, <laughs> it happened a month and a half ago. And this time, I'm like, I've just turned into like a combination of John Wick and John Rambo. I just put my foot flat on the ground. I popped it in myself just because, like, I know I. I just, unfortunately, it's part of my life now, and I, I've learned to kind of control falls by just kind of just slowing down and stop rushing, because I notice the falls happen more when I'm flustered. If I'm trying to move too quickly, 
for my body to or to moving too quickly mentally that my body can't react. I've learned to kind of just embrace yeah. it and kind of slow down. I started carrying a cane and I use that for, you know, balance and support reasons, um, which was not an easy thing to do at all, but I, I had to rip the bandaid off and I had to make it part of my life. Um, that's actually happened after the third time, which I told you it happened, you know, the, the, the two months after the second time it happened again, I had kind of like a, a breaking point for myself where I, I kind of broke down a little bit where I was furious and I was just kind of like, sick of falling sick of everything i'm like i just can't there's so many so much positive going around me but i kept i still was dealing with the reality of my situation it sucked and i realized that i can't do this on my own anymore and i realized i i have to accept help and part of it was i got to start carrying a cane with me because i got to stop these falls and they're going to happen i need to protect myself better um but i didn't want to be a 39 year old carrying a cane but I decided to do, um, you know, with with hey, Rachel is actually the huge. She's my guardian angel. She's everything. She's the best things ever happened to me. Um, she's my caretaker. She has to deal with me. She's dealt with me in the highest of highs that I've been going through lately, and then the lowest of lows. She's seen it all. She's never judged me through any of this stuff. Um, from the first time she saw me fall at the auto show to the to the time two weeks a month ago where she saw me rambo myself pushing my my bone my uh my joint back in the floor she's rambo yourself that's a good <laughs> billyism right there i know uh, i it is in the moment it sucked i hated it but then i realized like that's kind of badass actually <laughs> it's just gonna pop my toe back and it's pretty cool um right but no she's been she's always told me um and she's always been like my my the push to do some things and she said like you sh- Billy, you're like one of her words, not mine. Uh, so I'm not going to sound like I'm arrogant or anything, but she's like, you're one of the, you've always been one of the coolest people I've ever met in my life. Like you're one of the coolest guys on our first date. We went to the Hoxton. The Hoxton hotel is like a place where people that want to be cool go to. You go there because it's a place you just work from. Like you go to the places that people try to be cool. You go there because you might know somebody like you just, that's just you. You don't do it to, for like clout or anything, you know? It's like, Mm -hmm. if you just make the cane an extension of you, like your new sneakers or your new Jordans, like you can make it look cool. So that hit me hard. So I'm like, all right. I did one of the most important Google searches of my life. Cool canes. And I came across uh, this cane with like a bird on it. And it was the funniest looking cane. I'm like, that's kind of badass. I'm going to get that. I ordered off Amazon. So I started using a bird cane. And I didn't want to go out in public with a cane. I didn't want to. I was scared about it. I was really nervous. Um, I don't want people like, what's wrong with this guy? You know, because again, even to this yeah. day, I can still walk in a room. Like I look healthy for the most, you know, for the most part. You would, If I'm just standing still, still you wouldn't know anything's wrong. Um, but I decided to go out to like a street fest in our neighborhood. What they do in the summer is like little block party festival things. I wanted to go somewhere where I knew I might know some people. And I want to put myself in a situation where I'm going to have to like rip the bandaid off basically. So we went there with the cane and I swear to you within like 10 minutes, someone was like, the cane's badass. And all of a sudden, all the weight that was up here is gone. I started like, oh, oh, I so I'm like, all right, well, I, I embraced it. And now, and it makes a difference. It helps me, but it's also kind of a badass like accessory to have. So I've kind of made it part of my life. I have a couple different canes and um, I've embraced it. And that's part of my like what I do with my advocacy and then also the literally my social media name now I've garnered a following on social media I went from you know I guess 80 people to I'm over 8,000 now you know and people have known me now from my story to my cooking to my I've done you know my collaborations I've done my own actual pop-ups out here my pizza I've done collaborations with some big time content creators now that have been able to get like attention from outside of Chicago. There's been a lot of press and stuff. So I'm kind of gaining momentum now. I've had a couple recipes. I've, I do recipe development on the side now, kind of like having fun with con- using content creation in a, in a way to like bring new eyes and ears to what I'm doing, but also just chasing my passion of creativity through cooking because I love cooking and it's become kind of like my, my life now, you know? Um, and you know, part of it like is it's fitting that my name is the real Billy Z on there because it's literally myself. I'm not, 
I, I'm no different than I'm online than I am in, in real life. Like I'm the same person on there. I'm, I get mad about the bears and sports and I get annoyed about the bulls and all that nonsense. I make stupid jokes on there. I'm photoshopping Einstein's head on dumb things. I, I make silly puns. I still do the same thing I always do, but there's still a bigger meaning and, and message behind it, you know? And uh, I'm just myself and people have gravitated toward that, whether they like the cause or, they just like my attitude and they say that like, Hey, it's like refreshing. And you know, you're inspiring us by your actions. You're inspiring us to like, you know, your, your actions for your, your cause, but you're also just inspiring us to maybe cook. Like I get messages from people who are like, yeah, I've been wanting to learn how to cook and I haven't done it, but now you like, you're a home cook and you made things kind of like approachable for me and I want to do it. So just like when I was an intern, or when I was a producer teaching interns, I like to offer help now. Like I, I, I got, you know, taught myself how to make pizzas and I'm pretty good at it now. So I've done pizza making classes to like teach people the way I learned because I learned in a different manner. And so it's all, it's all part of this, you know, there's not one, my story as, as we go on here and we share it, as you can kind of tell is literally like an onion. There's a, a, a ton of layers to all of this. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm trying now, um, you know, to make the most of this, this crazy opportunity that I have, like, I, I want to have a career in food media, um, and, and have, rep- and be the representation and like the voice essentially for like the voiceless in that industry for people that have disabilities like myself and have rare diseases. Yeah. Um, and I want to, do- um, yeah. I, and <clears throat> that's kind of a good segue of talking about how you want to be kind of the voice and everything, because, you also started kind of on your YouTube channel, but you also started with, I don't remember the name and I don't know if you want to say it or whatever, but another platform where you were doing a, a cooking show. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, every yeah, yeah I was, or whatnot. Yeah. So I, uh, I started connecting with, I, I wanted, I want to get my story out to a national audience, yeah. but I don't want to push it. Like I, I know in my own way, I'm doing something that's never been done before. I have a story that's unlike anybody else's. It just, it that's is for sure. it's different. Yeah. Um, and I, and it's, it's perfect for people to hear. And I want more people to hear it throughout the world, but I also don't want to push it. I want everything I've done. I want it to be organic. Even with like my following, I could have, I could have done the shortcuts to grow a big following on social media by following trends and doing, you know, all the trendy things, whether it's trending audio and videos. I don't do that. I I'm like the most opposite of that. So I'd rather take the long way. Make because, fun of those. Yeah, I do too. I can't stand it. I hate. I, I yeah. really don't like that stuff. Um, and so I I zag when everybody zigs. I've always done that. And yeah. so I'd rather take my time and go the long way. So when it comes to gaining an organic following, like like nationwide, like it'll happen when it needs to happen. I'm not gonna push. I'm not out trying to push to get on national radio shows and go. Eh. You'll see what I'm doing, and you'll I'll get recognized in time. You know what I mean? And if the opportunity comes, do it. But one thing I wanted to do was connect with a website called Kitsch. And I did that about a year and a half ago. Um, Kitsch is essentially Twitch streaming for the culinary world. It's a website where you can do live cooking videos and live streaming from your home or wherever you want to. And you essentially have a live cooking show. And I was doing that initially. Uh, just like me, you know, do it. I, I initially just wanted to share my story. It wasn't going to be anything... I never plan on being like a creator on there, but after talking to the marketing people, they're like, no, you're honestly, your story is incredible, but like, you're, you're very skilled. You have a, you have a comfort on camera and a presence about yourself and you're kind of a natural at this. Why don't you host your own channel? And I said, sure. So I tried it and, and I, I started having fun with it and I created something on, the, on there. I called Sunday sandwiches where every Sunday I create a different, you know, original sandwich recipe and I tell stories through my food. Um, my food is inspired by sports a lot of times, my city, my culture. Um, I like to create original things. I'm not just making viral recipes. You know, I, I think that's something you'll never see me do. Um, but I like to tell like a story through making a fun sandwich and people, and that became something I, I pulled over to Instagram as well. And I'm kind of like, it's become kind of a niche for myself. And, you know, I've been using Kitsch and, you know, now Instagram has grown the most, but I'm going to, start doing some more YouTube stuff. And I have a website that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a home on here soon, but like I've gotten more confident with not only like recipe development, 
Um, I've had two recipes in the past month that have went viral. Like I say viral, they have monster views, but it's actually viral mainly in like Chicago, which is what I want. Like they're very Chicago centric recipes. Um, but two of which have over, you know, 350,000 views and been shared over 15,000 times. And it's like, it all comes wow. back to, Oh, it's like, Oh wait, that's a badass recipe. Oh wait, I know Billy. He's the, he's a dude that's been doing the, the, the fundraising for muscular dystrophy and, and all that. So yep. it's like, it's a great way to bring in new eyes and ears. And even with, you know, piggybacking on like creating a brand for myself. Um, you know, I had the Sunday sandwiches. I told you before I created something for the bear season called Chicago squares, um, tavern style pizza, which is like Chicago thin crust pizza is cut into squares. It's called party cut. It's like little tiny squares. And I created a series called Chicago squares and it's around the Chicago Bears season. And it's called Chicago squares where I make a tavern style pizza inspired by the bears opponent. So I went down the, the schedule 18 weeks of the NFL season every week. I make a different pizza inspired by whoever they're playing. So green Bay was week one. I made a cheese curd beer brat pizza with, uh, with um, some pickled uh, brandy old fashioned pickled mustard seeds, which is very, you know, green Bay thing. And every week I did this series and I wanted to, fuse my passions food and sports and showcase my creativity and all of that all happened and that was my like one of the more popular things i've ever created every video on instagram minimum has like 15 to twenty thousand views upwards a couple of them have like over one hundred ninety thousand views and TikTok, which i don't really have a following on there i was just kind of starting it around the start of the season i went from like a hundred followers to 2000 just because of that series. Every one of those videos yeah. took off. Like it just became a niche and people were like, okay, these are awesome. Like this is just a fun like series, but then all of a sudden they come to my page and they might not know who I am. They just know the bears pizzas, but then they're like, Oh wait, there's a pinned video on here. Let me watch it. And it's just me telling my story, in my own words, a news newscast. And all of a they're like, okay, wait, no, there's more, there's more to this here. And so guess what? Now I can educate more people in a new way. And, you know, I never really told you, but like flash forward to current day. Throughout all the food collaborations I've done, I've done over 50 in the city in the past two years. It's been two years now since I started doing all this stuff. I've raised $47,000 for the Muscular Dystrophy Association in two years. I've done over 50 collaborations. I have had, uh, you know, different media outlets and stuff cover me here in Chicago. Chicago magazine magazine just did a pizza feature on me, listing me amongst some of the better pizza places in the city. And like, I'm having the time of my life right now during like the weirdest, hardest time of my life. Like it's a blast. I'm enjoying myself through this food and it's opened up opportunities for myself. Um, you know, from I'm a brand ambassador for Gosney, one of the biggest pizza oven companies in the world. Now I do brand work with them. Um, and you know hopefully trying to share my story to like a worldwide audience with them you know i want to do some videos i never actually shared the tripping billy recipe i ever i never really did a video on the tripping billy like itself but i want to do one with them someday and like get it on their site on their youtube which is a monster following and get the story out to the masses you know uh so there's just been a lot um there's been a lot it's been crazy it's been a crazy i want to say two years but it's been really been a crazy 10 years when you look back at it it's been 10 years since this whole thing kind of the first symptoms and you see where I'm at now. And I didn't realize that, uh, man, $47,000 you raised. Yeah. $47,000. And we're approaching uh, the 50 K pretty soon, like by a few months, we have 50 K, which is nuts. Cause I never thought I'd never thought I'd raise any money. Like I didn't, I had no idea. I didn't know what I was doing in our fundraising in my life. But again, now it's not even about the money anymore. Like I, I can have, I can say I raised a billion. It doesn't matter. I just, I just want to keep getting more eyes and ears, share the story, have the conversations, lead by example, and, you know, hopefully inspire people, yeah. like I said. And you we mentioned before, life is, you know, I mentioned it and we talked about this, but, like, life is just about adjustments. Basketball is part of my life. I, I have to leave it to my, uh, my teenage nephew to uh, bully me into uh, trying to play again. Um, but he plays all the time and I would go watch him play on like Tuesday nights. And he's like, why don't you come try to shoot? I was like, I'd hold the ball and I haven't, I haven't been in the gym in like eight years at this point uh, or eight and a half year. You know, I, 
probably haven't touched a basketball at that point in like five years because I, you know, I was still playing for, you know, first few years of my symptoms, you know. Sure. Um, yeah. But I was away from it and I missed it. I didn't realize how much I missed it. Um, I, I missed it badly. Like cooking's, I love it, but like basketball is my heart. And I remember holding the ball and like dribbling on the side and standing there. He's like, why don't you come shoot? And I'm like, I can't do that. I can't shoot. He's like, yeah, you can. He's like, you work out still. Like your upper body's still strong. Like I know you can shoot like a free throw or something. And so I was just like nervous. It's kind of a mental hurdle trying to, you know, sometimes it's, a, it's an irrational. I mean, it's a real fear. I don't want to say it's an irrational fear, but there's still like, you don't trust your body sometimes. That's the hardest thing with this. I am a little more nervous, especially like in the Chicago winters are really tough. I'm really nervous about like ice and everything, like trying to lose my balance, you know? Um, oh, yeah. But I started really closely and I shot just like a little, like kind of like layup shot and banked it in. And he's like, step out a little more. I stepped a little further and I started like, you know, the muscle memory was there, form was there. So I'm like, I just flicked another shot, went in. He's like, go try to shoot a free throw. I shot a free throw swish and he goes nice See? and i'm like and so we start i'm like okay and i started like just dribbling around a little bit and again just always not even really bending my knees it's all upper body but it's just like you can see my form you could tell i played and you know i know that i i know what i'm doing it just you know it's a little different and then i set up a camera under the hoop and you can find this video it's on my instagram for like a year and a half ago or so but I um, I set up a camera under the hoop, and I didn't know anybody saw me set this camera up, but I just set it up so I can just see myself. I needed to see it for myself. I wasn't even trying to share this or anything. I shot, you know, a couple free throws, made two in a row, I made three in a row, made four in a row, made five in a row, made six in a row, oh, made, six in a row made, made eight in a row after not touching a ball in years. I didn't know this. I walk over, my, my brother's friend picked up my phone and walked around me the entire time and filmed the whole thing and I had no clue. And so I had this first time touching a ball in like five years and I made like eight in a row right off the bat. And at that point I realized, oh, wait, I can I can still shoot free throws. Like someone can just like, maybe someone just helps maybe rebound for me. It's like, I can walk after the ball, but it's just like, it's a little, a process, you know? So that was like a year and a half ago. And then I realized, okay, like, let me, let me, let me try it. Let me go, let me see if I can do this more. And so I went to the gym myself and I started like reinventing my form and learning how I can shoot more with more ease. And I even started like working out with a medicine ball, kind of like I'd lay down and shoot like a 10 pound medicine ball in the air just to get stronger. And all of a sudden I started shooting at the basketball court where I would take free throws, but then I'm like, let me see if I can shoot a three pointer standing stationary. And so it's hard from like just a set position to like, just shoot. You're just kind of like, I was just felt like I was chucking it. But then I had the idea of flicking the ball up and let it bounce back to me, like almost like a, a catch and shoot motion, making it more natural. So I did that. And all of a sudden I started shooting and I'm like, wait, I can, I can, I can, just, I can still shoot. And so I get more confident and I, and I re like reinvented my shot and now I can shoot like three pointers. Like I was, I did a three point shootout with a friend of mine. We would go shoot five from each spot. Uh, last week we shoot, you know, 25 shots. I hit 15 out of 25. <laughs> like I can still shoot. Oh, man. I, I shot better than him. And he was laughing so hard. He's like, you he like, you look like a robot. It's so funny. He's like, you're just like switch, switch. It's like, I don't know how you do it. Um, so I've been like using, like, I can still play. It's not the same, I mean, but something I thought I'd never do it again. So I kind of use that a little bit in my, in my journey. It's just me. Basketball is a part of my life. Like it's all part of my life and it's different, but it's still something. So you use that for motivation for people too, you know? Absolutely. So I, I, you were talking about that. I pulled up your Instagram and I went down your reels here and, uh, yeah, I found, um, I don't know if it's the first one, but yeah, you're shooting baskets right here. 10.3 thousand views on it. <laughs> Dude, it's pretty rad. It's, uh, yeah, it's just, been crazy. I was like, yeah, there's a, it's, I even did a thing. I, um, I have, I have big intentions, uh, and hopes here, not just to, you know, I'm working with the restaurants, obviously, and I'm doing that. Um, but uh, sports are a big part of this. So 
I'm actually trying to connect with the different sporting teams here in Chicago to do some, you know, ambassador work with them. Um, share my story with the Bulls, especially. That's my number. That's like my my white whale uh, is the is the Bulls. Like I want to do something with the Bulls badly. But even with the Bears, like that Chicago Square series I told you about, the whole idea yeah. with that is yes, it's creative and I want to do it for fun. But also my big picture was I want to connect with the Bears and do charity work with them and have them part of my cause. But Instead of me reaching out and saying, hey, here's my, here's what I am, here's my story, blah, blah, blah. No, here, how about this? I can create some really fun, cool content for you. And then guess what? There's a cause behind it. And maybe we can do Chicago Squares next season partnered together. So it was re- it went really successful this season. I'm definitely doing it next year. But I'm, next year I want to hope to connect with some of these teams, whether it's the Bears or other organizations, to you know use my story and, and, and bring it to like their game-changing audience you know what i mean if i partner with the bulls or the bears on something that's like that's life-changing for so many people oh, absolutely and yeah. the, the chicago squares i don't know what week it was because i was just kind of looking at the pictures going oh there's yeah. really a game man he's got some good little pizza going on there and then i don't know if it was week four five six or something i was like oh this is a thing so i had to go back to kind of find out what you were doing and stuff it's like oh you can read captions and stuff oh Dude, i am um, those things look delicious thank you I, i've also i went off the rails after like week five it was like i joined like jesus take the wheel i started like at the beginning they were creative early on but they were still kind of like subdued and then something clicked where yeah. i'm like i have ideas i'm just gonna let loose and i just started making these like kind of crazy i mean they all i love i'm very proud of them but they, they were hilarious like the ideas were insane like if you've ever been to minnesota Minneapolis area. One of the things they're known for is called Juicy Lucy. It's a, a cheeseburger. It's it's a cheeseburger that's the cheese instead of being on it is stuffed. It's a it's a stuffed cheeseburger. So <laughs> it's a very famous thing in Minneapolis. I created the Juicy Lucy pizza where I basically topped this pizza with little mini Juicy Lucy. So I just took I had this idea of taking little mini burgers, stuffing little cheese in them, cook pre cooking them, and then pay, placing them on a pizza as a topping after. And it was just like People were like, "This is I've never seen anything like this. Like this is hilarious, and it's gr- it's like a great idea. But it's just like, not only did you create, then not only did you have the idea, but like you executed it and you make it look pretty too. Like it's not just like slopped together. I made a right. jambalaya pizza with crawfish on top of it. Like there's so many outlandish um, ideas, and they came out well, and I I had fun with it. But like people on like TikTok where they didn't really know me." Um, it's Instagram majority of people like to follow me, obviously know who I am or, you know, they follow and they gain a little more interest. There's more, there's more on there for them to like figure out who I am. TikTok is a little more bare bones. I don't have a lot on there. It's kind of like every follows me on there is like randoms. So with the Bears series, the overwhelming response was like, oh, this is like, how do you not have a bigger following? This is awesome. Like, this is such a great. This is some of the best, like all the people who were at the end of the season were so, you know how it is, man. Internet, like social media comments suck. Like I get a lot of negative, you know, really bad ones. It's not all positive. And right, the, yeah. the overwhelming response of people on TikTok, which are, are great on there, but like, this has been the reason I followed. This is the reason I go on TikTok is just to see this series. This is awesome. I hope you do it next season. Like you're the Bears MVP this year because this is like better than anything on the field, you know. <laughs> and it's been fun like getting that reaction. So like now, yeah, I want to connect with the teams and do bigger things next year with it. So um, you know, it's all part of the all part of the journey, you know. Well, absolutely, man. I think that was a pretty rad little deal that you did. Like I said, it, it for me to like realize what was going on and and seeing it and following the journey all the way through and. Still kind of looking at it right here, like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just that. So, it's far from done. Like, it's, I, I took the last couple months, like, to kind of, like, I guess put a bow on a lot of what we talked about. Like, the yeah. last couple months, I, I took a little break um, because I need to, like, need to figure this out. Um, because, obviously, there's a lot of change. There's a lot of change in my life right now. Um, there's been a lot of change. Right. Health changes relationship changes obviously there's not more there's more on my plate now than it's ever been um obviously getting married in october um yeah. and you know i'm at a point where this is my passion i like to i love to share my story and and speak out about it and push people when they need to push and also i just like to create and share my food and follow my passion with this so like 
I think this is my future. I mean, I I know this is my future. I don't want to say I think this yeah. is my future. I'm just it's trying to figure out that now. trajectory. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out a way to make it work. I've done all of the, all of this has been done with a full time job, and you know, as right. you know, right. our job is not like it's not it's not a difficult job by any means, but like I'm everybody's middleman, and I have a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot on my plate. I've done a lot with everything, and I try not let not let to not let work slip and a lot, but like also, I just want to do this as my work. So I'm trying to figure out a way. I've essentially had to build my brand. If you look at if you look at my Instagram, you see a little avatar. I joke about the shishito pepper. That's my logo. Mm-hmm. I'm a shish, my. It's yeah. literally a shishito pepper turned into me with a beard and a pair of Jordans and a hat and a cane. It's a, it's just me. And so I'm kind of building a brand and I'm trying to figure out like you know which path to go. I'd love to host. I've done it on Kitsch, but I would love to host my own cooking show one day and and you know. Yeah share my do a tripping billy nationwide tour have my my pizza at the pizza pizzeria of the country i mean why not like i can i could do these things i just have to kind of figure it out and that's why i'm trying to take the time now because it's it's a lot to adjust to you know i can't, I can't yeah, it's all it logistics out. it's all logistics you know and i think i know somebody that uh, does logistics so yeah. what you know moving on to like after you got your diagnosis mm-hmm. maybe kind of in the middle of all this transition of, of getting over to the end of the food mm-hmm. and all of that, has there been any changes to your day to day, like living areas? Like I know you moved at some point. I don't remember. Yeah. Was, yeah. I had to, you know, okay. has it really kind of affected like, Oh, I can't live there. I can live here or whatever. And, yeah. You know, anything on, on yeah. that spot. Or in that mm-hmm. aspect of your life where things just changed. Yeah, I mean, I have I have to think differently now. I can't I can't get around physically like I used to. Um, I have to be smarter. Um, we moved from one apartment in our neighborhood uh, to another one uh, a few years ago. Um, and the reason was it's like our, our lease is up. We had to move anyway. But I I decided to look for a place that had an elevator, um, an elevator building. Um, and also had a parking garage that was inside because Chicago winters are tough and I can't be outside trying to clear my car off of ice and snow when I'm, you know, have issues of balance. And I also can't keep trying to get up and down stairs with groceries and such. So moving, you know, to a building that had an elevator and a garage is like, yeah, it might be a little bit, a little bit more uh, expensive than, you know, we paid before, but it's worth it. I need to take care of myself now. Um, you know, that's like, that's like the biggest thing is like moving into a place that is, is set up better for me to succeed. And this has been a huge difference, um, uh, which was, you know, huge for me that, and then also just like, I understand now that I have to plan ahead more, um, when I go places from going to like an event, a uh, concert, uh, a sporting event or something, I, I do have to see where be smart of where I'm trying to see, you know, get seated and adjusting to like stairs and making sure there's railings. And there's a lot of, it's been a lot of moments, you know, that I have to think about more, much more planning now than I've ever had to do. Um, even like air, tra- airfare, traveling, uh, going to the airport. I can't, I can't just like strain myself walking through an airport, dragging luggage around like I used to. Now I realize that, you know, there is um, kind of like a shuttle service, I guess, where they'll kind of like, put you in a wheelchair and they'll, they'll wheel you through the airport. And I didn't want to do that. I hate that. Like, I don't like to ask for help, but then I have to, like, I got to be smart about it. I can't be stubborn and hurt myself. It's just going to lead for me to like eventually get fatigued and, and fall or something, you know? So I've had to make those right. adjustments and I'm doing that every day, you know, for whether it's, you know, using the cane to Rachel put her hand out for me when I want to go like stepping, stepping up a curb. Sometimes stepping up a sidewalk curb will feel like a mountain to me. You know, it looks like nothing to anybody else, but to me, it seems like it's so high. And I'm worried about, like, can I, you know, reach and grab something, you know? And so, like, I would never take her hand when she offered it because I was just stubborn. But now I I, I take the hand money when I, I don't do it every time, but I, when I feel like I need it, I do it. Um, I use a handicap placard when I drive. I never wanted to do that at all. Like, I remember the first time I ever actually, I got the handicap placard and I refused to use it just because I always had this fear that I'm going to put it in the window. I'm going to get out of my car and someone's going to question me because I might not look like 
you know, like I need that, you know, for first glance. And literally, literally the first time I put the damn thing on, I walk out, I was at a parking lot, uh, this coffee shop, and the security guard comes up and is like, hey, she says, uh, that's a handicap spot. And I'm like, I know, I have a handicap placard here. She goes, what? I said, I have a handicap placard. It's in my window. Why do you need that? I was like, what do you mean, why do you need that? Like, I have, I have a, I, I, I said the smart ass thing. I was like, that's a really irresponsible thing to say. I think I said something back to her. I said, do you want me to show you my muscular dystrophy decoder ring or something? Like, that's such a terrible thing to ask somebody. And I looked up my camera yeah. and I told her, like, but that was my fear. And it happened the first time I ever had to use it. And I'm like, I hate this. I hate it. It happened another time too, but like, I'm over it now. I, I don't care. I, I just have to take care of myself. I can quiet the noise around me. But like, that's the kind of mm-hmm. shit that you have to, it's unfortunately, you have to just do. I'd much rather be in my position where I don't need a wheelchair, obviously. And I, I, I am mobile for the most part. I have this a disability and I have issues getting around sometimes, but I can still do the most. I can do most things still, or the most things I can. Or if I can't do something, I can find some workaround to make it work. And I'm going to do that yeah. as long as I can. That's all I can do, you know. Um, but yeah, it's gonna absolutely. be smart. I think that's a, a pretty important aspect of of this podcast. Here is just hearing something like that because I think being stubborn is, is it's just in the guy DNA, right? Like we yeah. don't want to ask for help because we're supposed to be big, powerful, strong guys. But being able to hear that, you know, you went to therapy. You started working on yourself. You know, you've got a fantastic woman at home that's helping you out. And, you know, being able to just be like, I'm just going to walk with this cane. You know, you're you're allowing yourself to be vulnerable in situations. I think that's very inspiring for other people who may be fighting something else or whatever. But hearing how you're just strong and brave and being able to do that, you know, like I said, that. To me and a lot of other people, I mean, that's just really inspiring. Well, I know, appreciate it. And, but, like, I, the biggest thing I want to say, though, like, you know, I'm not perfect. Life is not perfect. There's going to be good days and there's going to be bad days. I'm going to, like, I haven't, I, <laughs> I treat my life like a warehouse sometimes, you know, uh, zero days. And, you know, I've got, like, the little science is how many days till the last accident. I, I went like a good amount of time. I almost had almost a year where I didn't fall. I went from falling all the time to almost a year where I didn't fall. And I felt like, because I was like understanding, I just moved slower, started carrying the cane, be smarter about situations. And it was helping. Slow down, breathe, just relax and go through. Then I had a stretch where I John rambled my foot twice in two days. Literally, it was a, a couple months ago. It happened... I got out of bed at, um, like, I think it happened once at, uh, it was like one more, no, it was one day during the house. Uh, I was in the house, and I kind of got I, I got out of character, got flustered with something. I was dealing something with work. It messed me up, and I was trying to get Einstein, and I, I just fell, and I popped my toe out, and it took me a minute, but it, like, I was weird. I didn't mean to pop it in. I actually, like, literally just, like, touched my foot for a second, and it, like, popped back in right away. Like it didn't, it, it dislocated, but it wasn't like severe. You know what I mean? It was just kind of like a little off. So it hurt and it was like hurt sore for a day, whatever, but it was okay. A day and a half later, Einstein's got to get up in the middle of the night. I take him out. I like wasn't looking and I walked around the house with the lights off and I fell again. And this time it happened again. That's the time where I tried to get it to pop back in. It didn't pop. And I was like, oh, God, I don't want to go to the ER. I just don't want to do this again. And then I popped it in. And it worked. I got it in. But, like, I fell twice in, like, two times in three days after not falling in months. And then I'm in, I immediately fell back into the same rut mentally. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this all over again. I got, I'm so freaking sick of this. But then I just remind myself that, like, there's going to be good days. There's going to be bad days. I can only hope that there's more good than bad. And that's it. Like, what am I going to do? You know, it's just part of my life. Just put myself in the position that I can succeed, be smart about this stuff. And then, but there's going to be some things I, I can't control. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll do, we'll, the best, the, the best will happen from it, I guess. You know what I mean? If, uh, if you just kind of like realize that 
you may have some faults and may have some days that are tough, but it'll it'll work. Um, and yeah, absolutely. like, I try to be real about this stuff. You know, I don't want to um, like it's not all it's not all great, man. Like, there's been a lot of positive, and, and I'm having a blast with it. But you just have to sometimes um, realize that some days are gonna just shit's gonna happen sometimes. You know, it's not it's not clean. It's not, a, not always gonna have the cleanest thing. So I try to talk about um, as much as I joke about the fun stuff and I do the pizzas and the food and stuff like that. I still will when I have to talk about the serious things. I want to make sure people know about it too. It's not all just good stuff because it's right. just, I don't want to tell one side of the story. You know, because that goes against everything no. I told you at the beginning. Yeah, and that's that's really one of the reasons I wanted to ask that question and just get yeah. your your take on it. And one thing I learned when I was going through my stuff, um, I, I ended up seeing a therapist too. But one of the things that I ended up taking away from her is uh, this file cabinet philosophy, you know. And it sounds like you do a good job of recognizing it. And what I mean by it is, you have file cabinet, and you have all these different drawers, and you know that bottom drawer is full of all the junk. You know, that's where all your depression and all the yeah. the love and, and self-hate and all that stuff is down there. And sometimes that drawer opens up a little bit and some of those files pop out, you know, and it looks like you do a really good job of like recognizing like, wait a minute, that file's opening right now. I need to pick these up, put them back and try to shut that door, you know, or shut the drawer. And sometimes yeah. that's pretty tough to do. Sometimes you could put stuff back, but it's hard to shut it, you know, and move on because that. It just lingers, and it's very easy to fit backwards into it if you don't recognize what's going. And then you're like, oh, 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 I got really low really quick. I mean, it comes out of nowhere. 100%. Well, I tell you 100%. Yeah. And then there's one thing I'm going to add on that because it's just great you, yeah. great you bring that up. Because when I – the time that I fell, the third time I told you I was in the hospital, it was right before I started using a cane. I told you I kind of had like a really like a breakdown that day. I was so, I was so furious and I was so upset. I remember crying all day and just feeling a shell of myself. And a couple of my friends said like, dude, allow yourself to cry and be bad and mad and upset. Allow yourself to feel it, have the emotions, get, let yourself do it. You never allow yourself. It's okay to freaking feel things. And then, Give yourself a day and then go back on the horse tomorrow. You don't have to push through immediately every time. So when you talk about like sometimes the, the file cabinets are open, sometimes there's too much stuff in those cabinets and you need to like clean them out a little bit and nothing's wrong with cleaning them out and then closing them back up. Because I, before I went to therapy, I, I still even still, I try not to do this. I still do it. I'm a victim of it sometimes. I bottle things up and bottles oh, eventually yeah. burst. Yeah. yeah. So I, I try to get better about like not doing that. Um, so I think that's like one lesson I always try to tell people is like, it's okay to feel things. It's okay to have a bad day in bad moments. Vent away. I took the rest of that day to be angry and sad. Then I just woke up the next day. I'm like, fresh start. Let's go. That's it. Move forward. Let's, let's start. Let's start working on it and, and be better. And that's, I mean, I don't know. That's all I can do. It's just, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, being a able to. I'm a naturally competitive person. I want to get better. I want to make oh, myself better. So. Yeah, I think you and I are both that way. And I think allowing yourself to have those emotions, you know, and yeah, let it out, crying and do all that stuff. I mean, yeah. that just allows the reset button and that drawer shut just to be a little bit easier, a little bit sweeter. Yeah. You know what I mean? 100%. So, well, Billy, we have been at this for two hours and 56 minutes. Yeah, man. And that's... Uh, Doing pretty good here, man. Yeah, and I'm yeah. sure we could keep going, but I think this is probably a good segue for this time to uh, to come to an end. I think with everything that you're doing and inspiring a bunch of people, I think I would really like. Obviously, you and I are just going to be in contact, anyways. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the whole work thing, but you know, I would like you to come back on, and I don't know, a few months, six months, or whatever. And maybe we can kind of recap yeah. what's going on and, and, and stuff and, um, you know, see more more funds because totally, man. now that I'm ending it, I, I actually have another question for you, you know, yeah, and uh, most people are like, oh, we're done. We'll shut it off. But up, yeah. I mean, being, oh, did you get a glass of water from Rachel? Uh, yeah, actually, that was Einstein. He picked up. No, yeah, it was Rachel, of course. 
Nice. <laughs> I taught him uh, how to give me water. He fetched me a beer. Oh, yeah. It worked out great. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's really rad. Well, okay. So you're the ambassador for Illinois. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what does that really entail? You know, I didn't know that there was ambassadors for them. Yeah. Know, they're so then, um, you know, statewide is. Is, is pretty interesting they have they have a national they have a national ambassador which they they have a few national there's like two national ambassadors and there's like a celebrity uh, ambassador as well um they vote on those every year and they change maybe one i would hope to be one day that i become a national ambassador it'd be really cool to do um but i'm not like i'm not pressing so whenever it happens it happens but for right. illinois or the state ambassadors what happens is um the different states like in illinois here um there are different events there are different um there's different so, uh, social events, different charity events. They have um, sponsors, for example, like Sitco is actually a huge sponsor um, for the MDA. They donate a ton of money um, to the MDA. They do different, like, different golf outings and everything and um, all sorts of events. So they'll have me. I've, I've spoken at their um, their golf outing. They've actually, I've had a pretty good partnership with the field from Sitco because I spoke at their golf outing last year for the first time and they were blown away by my story. Um, spoke to like a hundred people. That's this huge um, gala and event they did, and uh, they were blown away by it. And you know, they're like, they specifically requested, like, "Hey, we would love to have Billy again," because like our staff was moved by that. You know, a lot of people are not used to hearing adults' versions of these stories. It's usually with muscular dystrophy, it's a lot of like children. Um, children become adults, but I just have a few. I have a scenario where I was a healthy adult the majority of my life. And so I have a whole unique take that I think a lot of people don't usually hear and don't really see. So, um, yeah, I, I'll speak at different events. I've, I've emceed our muscle walk two years in a row. The, there's a, it's called a toast to life gala. It's like one of their largest, like fundraising gala events every year. Um, I was one of the speakers this year. I spoke at it, uh, which was great. Um, and spoke to the crowd and, um actually had they well i was a they have a big silent auction and i was part of the auction where i would actually host the pizza party at your house and i bring my pizza oven and make pizzas for the for oh, the event nice. and stuff so but yeah it's mainly just like speaking speaking appearances you know sharing your story just kind of like being out there from and it's just with me they again they were they were very um you know my biggest strength is I was like speaking and, and, and being out there and not needing a script or anything. You know, I could just go talk. So it's like, it's not, not a lot of people could just kind of like turn that like switch on, you know? Uh, and so with my situation and you know, the MDA has this, like the cool thing with me and I, what I love about our relationship is they ask me to do some things, do some events, but majority of times I just ask them like, just let me do my thing trust that I'm going to, I'm going to speak out and do things the right way, represent the organization the right way, but let me just do my own thing and create my own path for this. And we'll go. And if you need something from me, let me know, but I don't really ask for anything from them. It's just more like, let me just do my own thing. And I've kind of created my own little niche, you know, and I, I get to bring like my demographic that I've been able to hit is something that MDA probably would have never reached. You know what I mean? I'm reaching people through food Absolutely. and through drink and through sports. I'm basically like trying to feed you, maybe get you drink, drunk and like, go play, let's go watch a basketball game. <laughs> that's like how, that's how I advocate. Um, and they're probably not going to reach that with any other way. So it's right. cool because I can, I'm bringing people in their twenties and thirties that probably never would have hurt. And I didn't know what muscular dystrophy was before I got diagnosed. I didn't know who the MDA was. Like I had no clue. So if I can bring eyes and ears to the organization and hopefully one day there is a cure um, or a treatment because they hope that there will be one in my, in my, in my lifetime, guess what? Absolutely. I'm hustling my ass off because I would love to be a part of the reason why there was something. And maybe it came from one of my events. Maybe somebody works for a pharmaceutical company that heard my story or whatever. And they found like, Hey, this is a treatment. I, I was inspired by a story and I, I wanted to make it my life's work to find something, find an answer for this. And it's found. I think that would be kind of a cool way to end this freaking story. So I'm going to do what I can yeah. to bring the attention to it. You know, no, I don't want to, I, I, I don't want to live like this forever. 
Mm, well, yeah, I get that. And it's really kind of funny because, you know, I found it a little bit the same. Um, we had the social media stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And then I was also asked like a while ago, like, what's the purpose of your channel? And it drove me crazy, man. Because I just decided to make this YouTube channel to be just like, I'm a dork and I'm kind of an idiot, right? Yeah. So I was like, I'll just showcase my goofiness or whatever, doing moto stuff and riding or whatever. And Once I figured out that men's mental health was a big part of me and what I wanted to advocate for, you know, it kind of gives new purpose and new drive to what you're already doing. So yeah. I'm at a very much smaller scale than what you're doing, you know, but I think once you started, you know, when Rachel and you were like, we're, I'm going to start advocating for this. I'm going to start doing this and started putting all this stuff together and started snowballing. I mean, that's kind of, I'm sure that at that point you were kind of like, wow, we're, we're getting some traction. So let's do that. Cause you got YouTube too, you know, you got the oh, YouTube yeah. channel. You've got the Instagram, TikTok, you know, I mean, that's a pretty big, I have pretty to big start following with, that you're getting, right? Yeah. I just have to start. I'm sorry. I've started using these in, the, in a, in a better way though. You know, like I, Instagram is where, where the majority of my like audience is. I'm trying to, I'm trying yeah. to find time to grow out the other ones. Cause I think there's more potential, especially for more like, not even just audience, but like more like career things if we're going to talk about like yeah like a personal business aspect of it like i if i need to create streams of revenue like i need to go to a platform that has the most growth potential and that's going to be like youtube but again with that comes you need to dedicate more time to it and that's why i have to figure out like it makes sense but no like right i i'm still i'm you're the same way we are both it doesn't matter what if you have one person following you or you have 50,000 people following the numbers don't mean anything it's what your engagement really is if you have an engaging group of people that are following you and they're they're tied and then they're like they're they're whatever you're whatever you're creating if it hits them that's more than a number the numbers don't mean crap honestly like they do it's wonderful I'd love to say like I have I, I I'm up to 50,000 followers now because it just shows that I worked hard to get this and it's grown but like Honestly, my my eight thousand number that I have is is a, an engaging audience, and so if you do that same thing and it just grows and people want to grow with you, they're you're gonna have people that are like yeah, I remember like I loved, I watched him grow and it's been cool. It's been like awesome because mm -hmm. it's like he deserves yeah. it. He's been doing it. Same thing with you, man. When you're doing this, you're just gonna start. Like I honestly, I love that you like this. I've been thinking about even like maybe doing a podcast or doing something like that, like some more and. I mean, Definitely you're should. doing it. You're, I know what you already had. You're already doing it. So you just have to just kind of keep keep going it and just kind of figure out, like, the avenues and stuff. The yeah. world, like, I personally, I truly believe that I haven't even, like, with what I'm doing, I haven't even scratched the surface of what I can do. There's literally so much I can do and yeah. want to do, and I'll get it done. I just got to figure it out. Like, I don't – I take on a lot of stuff, and sometimes I have to figure out what my order uh, order of operations is because I'm doing too much sometimes. But I'm like trying to figure it out and start to get priorities straight, and I'll do that. And you know, it's a it's two years ago, three years ago, I would have never known. Ten years ago, if I oh, looked yeah. at myself now, because Rachel asked me this recently, it's like what would what would uh, thirty year old Billy look and say at forty year old Billy? And first thing I said was like, "What the hell happened to your legs, dude?" Um, <laughs> that's like the first thing I would have said. But besides besides that. Um, <laughs> I would have been like, yeah, like this is crazy. This has opened up a world of opportunity for me. Yes, it's hard. Yes, it sucks. Um, the physical aspects are annoying. The mental aspects are very difficult. Um, but I have a great support system. I have the best girl in the world, the best dog in the world, best cat in the world, best family in the world, and best friends in the world. I have people. I got a whole city now following me and supporting me that have my back, and that's. And I'm not from Des Moines, Iowa. No, 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 hit no uh, shots at Des Moines, Iowa. I'm from Chicago, one of the, you know, one of the bigger cities in the U.S. And I'm making my mark in one of the most competitive food cities in the in this, the world, yeah. even. And and people know who I am now. It's like I'm not doing this for fame or anything, but it's crazy though because I go to the grocery store, people know who I am now. 
you know, like, oh, hey, it's Billy. Hey, it's Tripping Billy. I'm like, hey, what's up, guys? And it throws me off every time. It's like crazy to me, but it's it's cool. It's part of it. And again, mm-hmm. it's for a bigger it's a for a bigger reason. But like, it's an adjustment. I never thought any of this stuff would have happened. So I just have to kind of like take it in stride and take the positives of the positives, the negatives of the negatives, and just try to keep keep going forward. You know, I, uh, I coached high school football for a while, and I just had this conversation with a friend of mine, Sean, and uh, he and I were actually texting, going back and forth about something. And um, one of the things that I, I took away from the head coach um, was actually a model based on servant leadership. You know, we would always want the team captains and the seniors to be servants, not entitled, right? So really what you're doing is the epitome of of that, being the servant leader. You know, you're becoming the voice. You're becoming the leader. You're kind of just – you're that guy around Chicago for right now. And it's, it's going to go nationwide. It's going to go international because right now – as we record this, you have 8,333 followers just on Instagram, you know, and that's only going to get bigger for yeah. sure, you know, and your logo is fantastic, by the way. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I actually did a, uh, the, I don't know if you saw the alternate one. Uh, it's kind of funny. Um, I'll send it to you later, but I, uh, I did a, there's a place called Pretty Cool Ice Cream. We they, they actually, they are pretty cool ice cream. They make ice cream bars, but like these like crazy flavors all like artisan ice cream bars and they do a different Man. charity um yeah it's awesome so um they do like yeah. a collaboration pop once a month for charity so i partnered with them on tripping billy's tiramisu as a tiramisu um oh, yeah. ice cream bar but the low <laughs> but the logo i i messaged my guy max uh, who makes my logo and i said hey man can you can you take the same concept of me as a pepper but turn me into an ice cream bar holding um holding tiramisu in my arm he goes yeah he's like i don't know how you think of this stuff but he made it and it's hilarious it's just like i want to keep doing that and keep turning myself into different food items but like you know love it same. absolutely so, yeah that branding is is spectacular i, I think it's yeah dude, i'm gonna it's make some bad. at some point i want to make some merch i'll send you a hat i'm gonna I'll eventually do it i i just don't know where the hell to do that <laughs> i don't know anything about this stuff yet but i want to make like i uh, i can Oh, oh, you mean Tukes? Tukes. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just was up in Canada and somebody put a beanie on my head and they're like, what is that? I'm like, it's a beanie. And all the Canadians just give me a hard yeah. time. They're like, no, dude, yeah. that's a toque. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. There. Hey. 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 Yeah. Hey. Oh, hey. sorry about it. Hey, hey there. Dude, you hold it. <laughs> <laughs> I love Canadians. Yeah, so man. <laughs> so, Another couple small questions for you as they're popping into my head. Um, Sure, sure. I don't know if you could speak for her or whatever, but Mm -hmm. how has things changed, uh, you know, as your journey is going with Rachel? How have kind of, has anything in her day to day changed to kind of help you or, you know, get on a different routine, a different schedule or whatnot? Um, Yeah. I mean, I I can't speak can't speak exactly for her. I know there's emotions that probably she's got to obviously deal with uh, as well. It's not like the easiest thing in the world. You know, when your partner, when you when you change from a partner to almost a caretaker in a way, I'm still independent, right. but like there's some things unfortunately I can't do. Um, but no, she's been the best. I think the biggest adjustment is probably for her uh, when we go out. She she's unfortunately has to worry about me a little bit. If I'm not with her, she, you know, if I go take Einstein out, um, you know, go on walks, you know, there's probably a thought because I've had a couple falls when I'm not there. If I'm not, you know, just be careful, make sure you're okay. Don't, you know, make sure you have your phone with you. Cause there's a time that I felt it had my phone with me. Like it's like little stuff like that. But when we're out together, I think she just kind of has to like look out a little bit. She looks, I walk a lot of times with my head down and it's not cause I'm not confident, but it's because I have to look and just see if the surfaces that I'm walking around. And she does that a lot more for me. She'll look ahead and say, okay, no, there's watch your stuff here or, give me your hand. There's something here, you know, so like navigating things, she's always looking out for that. And then, you know, this is part of something that I I don't love uh, as I'm, as I'm just as a man, but like, I can't, when it comes to like moving stuff now, I'm, I have a body strong. I can lift, but like when it comes to like, for example, I need to move a sofa and I need to bend down to lift something up. um, I have no shot. 
you know, I can't, I can't lift like that anymore. I'll fall backwards. So, you know, I received a, a pizza oven from Gosney from the, the pizza oven company I'm an ambassador for, and it's a 150 pound oven and it's in this box and it has a lift straight up. I can't move that. I can't lift that. Like I can lift. like if it was just like sitting on something and I need to lift it up a little bit, I am strong enough to like push, but I can't lift and move. So I feel helpless in certain situations, whether it's like bringing groceries or like carrying a box from the car. I can't, I can't do that anymore. And that sucks because I don't want to make it feel like she needs to do that every single time. And she's, I don't want to like play like sexist roles, male, like, oh, men, I'm a strong man. I got to always do the carry lift, you know, heavy lifting, but like, I want to be able to help more and I can't. And I hate that. Um, but she, she does it and she's a trooper and she's stronger than anybody I know. So yeah, there's been a, obviously adjustments and I'm sure she, the mental aspect sucks too, because your, your partner has a disease and, you know, thankfully, like I haven't had any crazy drop offs and I'm, I'm trying to work out and keep myself as active as I possibly can, you know what I mean? Um, but like, it's, it's hard, you know, as I, it was hard for in the beginning. I was afraid when I got diagnosed, I was afraid she was going to leave me just because, you know, it goes from a muscle, you know, muscle thing to a rare disease with no cure. So, um, you know, she's the, she's the best. She's an angel. Um, and is my angel that watches over me. And, you know, I'm not a really, I'm not even a religious person. And, you know, I believe that she's, you know, there's a reason we're together, um, for both of us, not just, it's not all like one side or anything. I think I, <laughs> I could provide things in a relationship too. Um, but you know, she's, uh, she's wonderful and has had to make a lot of sacrifices for me. And, uh, you know, I love that. I love her forever for that. Yeah, man, sounds like uh, an amazing woman, you know, for sure. Listen, I'm always cooking. I make, I fry things in the house sometimes. I, I make messes. I am not smooth. When it comes to like quiet, I'm not quiet. I make so much noise. I bang cabinets. And even when I'm trying to, I try to be like cool and like, you know, not make noise. I still muscular dysphoria or something like something will make uh make me lose my balance or like just slam a pot down I'm like ah shit even when i'm trying to be quiet i make noise so like yeah i'm i'm a i'm a procrastinator i i have habits that you know i wish i was better at um that i'm trying to figure out i'm far from perfect um but she accepts my flaws and understands them and you know when i when i screw up which i do screw up i'm far from perfect she understands that and you know deals with it the best that she can you know um and i try to I try to be a good partner and do what i can um like i said i'm far from a perfect person um but i'm trying to do the to be the best i can be and and if anything when i do screw things up or i mess something up i just try to learn from it and try to make sure that i don't repeat the same thing that's all i can do dude you're an amazing person billy and i think you're quite the inspiration to people and even on the back side with Rachel, I, I think it's just absolutely amazing. You know, I, I and, uh, want to say thank you for giving me, you know, what, I mean, we were pre-show a little bit. So, I mean, we're tickling three hours and 40 minutes together right now. You no, know, man, that's for sure. Thanks for having me. I pre- really appreciate our friendship and, uh, you know, I don't listen. I don't care if we know that we never book another load together. I care less about that. Like, you this more than our our relationship and friendship has become uh much more than uh you know where it started with work but like what we're both doing our passions are outside of work and i think a lot of people like should learn from that like don't be a job is one thing obviously it's important money is very important i don't care what anybody says (laughs) paying bills and everything it's 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 a thing but like find balance, find what brings you joy, you know, and like have hobbies. Like I love cooking. I love sports. I'm trying to make hobbies out of those, you know? Um, And you're obviously doing great things and this is just going to keep growing and it's going to get better and better. I'm looking forward to see what's next for you because it's going to be really cool because this is already pretty awesome. So it's just going to get better and better. I appreciate that. You know, and like I said, we just kind of going through a rebrand here and just trying to grow and like, you know, passive income and trying to make things kind of full time, 
is really what we're trying to do. And that, that was the big thing with, with changing from the motorcycles and pancakes to motorcycles and pod cakes to <laughs> just pod cakes, yeah. you know, so there's a whole story there, but you know, if you're listening to this on YouTube and you're not watching the video or you're listening to this on uh, Spotify right now, uh, you can find Billy on YouTube and the Instagram at the real Billy Z. And you can find him on TikTok at the real Billy Z underscore. So there's no other socials you're on, right? It's just those three. No, but you know what, here, this, this, I'll tell you. No, Kitsch is a, you can find me if you go on Kitsch.com, you can see him on there. I don't know how much I'm going to be doing, um, to be honest with you, on there. Um, mm-hmm. But I'll just give you a sneak preview now because, I, you know, whenever you hear this, people are here this down the road. I have a website. Um, it's going to be going live in a couple of days. It's actually technically up now. You can go on there now if you want to, if you want to really get a sneak peek on there. But trippingbillyz.com, www.trippingbillyz.com. Um, I have my website. Link you to all of my socials. I'll have recipes on there. Um, if you're in the Chicagoland area, you can see where you can try my food at different collaborations and such. Um, and yeah, more on there. I'm going to have a newsletter and kind of grow some stuff up. Maybe I'm sure I have work, but I needed to have a hub that wasn't just like Instagram and social media. So uh, the website will. Website's actually technically live right now. Like I said, trippingbillyz.com. That is super awesome. And when you get the merch going, um, once we get off here, I'll tell you a little oh, something, something on the back side there. Okay. But yeah, cool. dude. Um, yeah, other than that, man, I just want to say thanks. I appreciate you. And man, I really hope that this uh, touches somebody, you know, in a very positive way and, uh, you know, maybe helps somebody out. So, oh, yeah, man. Billy, you're an inspiration, brother. I appreciate you, pal. All Thanks, right, man. Um, this is awesome. Uh, I appreciate you, and uh, yeah, let's talk soon. Let's do it again. Yeah, man. And like that, we're out.